So in today's video, we're gonna be teaching Zach how to install a set of steps on his own. And learning those set of steps is only part of what we're really trying to teach Zach, and that's to become an independent thinker. To make a mistake, to learn from his mistake, and then to move on from his mistake. So we're going to be letting Zach screw up and then trying to course correct him without trying to hurt his feelings. So let's just dive right into today's video. So if you're just tuning in, this is part two. And in part two, I can already see some of the things that we went over with Zach are starting to sink in from part one. He's noticing that you've got a level front to back. He's also taking into account that you level side to side. You, you level each stair with the stairs adjacent to it. He's doing all of this on his own and independently, which tells me that what we were trying to drive home in the first part, and it's working. We figured out why my corner wasn't going down. When a tree root in the way. Okay, so, take cut that, throw that out of the way, fill it in with a little dirt, Get some sand, pack it back in. Now my corner should go down finally. 
So it was always sitting up. I was wondering why the heck was it sitting up? Well, <laughs> drew it. Now to me, a leader, a job foreman, a boss, whatever you want to label them, the best ones out there answer to no one. Well, let me rephrase that. They may have someone above them, but they never bring their problems to them. They always bring, if there's an issue, they may bring it to their attention with a solution. These are the guys that I have found that whether it's in my company or any company they're at, those are the guys that excel. They don't wait for someone above them to come up with a solution for them. They already have it in hand when they go to them. So if you are one of those laborers and you just want an opportunity, a chance, just think of it like this. You never bring a problem to a boss unless you also can bring one or two or even three solutions. And understand this, sometimes a bad boss will take credit for the things that you bring to them, the solutions that you bring to them. But that doesn't mean you stop, it doesn't mean you cave, and it doesn't mean you quit doing that. Because eventually someone will notice what you're doing and give you the credit that you deserve for it. That's how a true boss or leader changes from being a laborer to moving on upward. At least in my opinion. Now I have had the opportunity to train a lot of guys to become pretty good leaders, run their own companies, and little things go a long way. And that's what I look for. And the fact that Zach just popped that timber out on his own. If you guys go back to video number one, you may recall where he left the timber in place and blindly followed instructions, even though they weren't quite what we wanted to accomplish. He's now making judgment calls on his own and changing his course of direction without needing to ask if it's okay to do it. That shows me progress. At least that shows me progress in my opinion. Now as the owner of the company, one of the risks I take is the fact that some of the decisions that Zach makes independently and on his own are going to be wrong. And that just comes with the territory. As a boss and an owner, I've got to be understanding and flexible enough to allow Zach to make these mistakes. But I also feel personally that it's my job as a boss and a leader to give him the environment where he can make those mistakes safely. That's why we happen to be working on a project at my own house. Whatever he screws up there, I live with his mistakes. They don't go to a customer's property. And, and the only time that I'll feel comfortable enough to release him onto a customer's property is after he's made all of his mistakes on my own. Didn't even phase it.
Here with your hammer, see if you can bust it out of there. Chisel here? Uh, no? no, I don't got any chisel. I'm gonna get a couple. Now to me, I've always firmly believed that there's more than one right way to accomplish anything. Meaning that I may have one way that I want something done, but that doesn't mean it's the only way for it to get done and to be done right. Now in this case, the guys have a root that's in the way of letting that timber get in place. They have two options. They could cut that root or they could cut the timber. They opted to cut the timber so that the tree would stay unharmed. Either way works with me. So if you missed part one, Zach missed a critical step during the initial construction of these stairs. He forgot to level the stairs with the stairs adjacent to them, meaning he would level one timber, but he would not level it with the timbers above it, below it, and right next to it. And I can see already we're allowing him to make that mistake and then correct that mistake has paid off. Notice here he's carefully measuring all of the stairs next to him to make sure that everything lines up the way that it's supposed to be.
at that trough. Put them in at a little bit of an angle like this and you'll be all right. So suck it in at the bottom. I didn't screw it in. You don't want to pre-drill or? No. Just screw them right in at this. And if you can come and see, you know, get them sunk in. Good, good. Okay, come down here and get this one. We're down, okay, whatever, yeah. We're in the way down, yeah. Good, good, keep going. So good, yep, 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 okay. In fact, that one's actually a little lower than the other one, but it doesn't matter because you go like this and we're level. I almost level, see? Okay, put the... Uh, put the what? I have to back it out. Back off one of them. Look at that ain't coming out. Got to back this one off a little bit. This one. Okay. Hitting it back up. Okay, they want three more in there. Put one in the middle and then split the difference on both ways. Oh, she didn't bite. Back her off. Might have to go higher on that one. In the middle. Don't touch it. I'll yeah, just put one over there in between the two. Is it the other skewer? No. Good dog. I might have hit one of the screws by random. Yeah. Double out. Yeah, it's a pin. That's a pie hot. Okay, yeah, yeah, then break. Okay, then you want one here? Somewhere? Yeah, about, about there, somewhere. Gee, thanks, Frank. I got them steps done today with your help. Thank you. You're a hell of a guy, Frank, for helping me. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> Good man, good. Just one more. You need to get that pen on the bite like that. Man, I'd be at a loss without you. He would. <laughs> he would. Come this way. Come this side of that hole. Yeah, you missed right there. Yeah. You, uh, that's okay, at least it went in. It's, it did deep enough. That's good. Okay, that's that. The sod balls, or the sod chunks, put it on. Oh no, we gotta put a board up there, yeah. But they, they can go, they need to fill them up in either here, and then uh, above on that landing and stuff, all them, them sod chunks from that landing, that way you can put them on the sides of it. Okay. The don't don't bury the the root. And then down here, these can be, yeah, this can all be backfilled, not not in front, but the side. 
But then, then this is going to be a hole right here this is, uh, for the hand railing. Okay, so I'll have to get some of this back field.
Zach, what did you learn from the build? Uh, how to make sure that everything's leveled and all that other stuff that goes along with laying up steps and all that other jazz. So one of the things too that you got to make sure is your steps have a slight slope on them, that your step height is consistent. Yep. Because you yeah. don't want your cadence or rhythm thrown off. Yeah. Yep. And you don't want to be feel like you're going uphill every time you're stepping or you go downhill you're going to be shooting off the bottom of tread the depth needs to stay consistent as well yeah. unless you have a dedicated landing or platform or some kind of a transition as well so we don't want to have one step then two steps then one step then two steps that throws your cadence off so let's take a look at what we've got done here so this is a dedicated landing pad and then we've got one, two, three, four, five timbers, second landing pad, right? And then we've got one, two, here's your cadence, your rhythm, here's your steps going down. And then another dedicated landing pad. And so every single one of those steps, if you take a look, has the same one, two, one, two, one, two. The step height is the same. Now we're gonna dress this up. We're not done. We're doing some cosmetic stuff here. Um, to match with the house to go with the look of the rest of the house and we're not done with the entire structure but this gives you the idea of what it takes and you don't need a lot of it's not fancy materials and you no. st still can build a very functional very fun staircase and we wanted something rustic to go with the rustic look of the house you and your rustic yeah I, that's me and there she is. Rustic, but I gotta drive the fanciest skid loader. <laughs> hey, I like my I like my equipment nice. I like my house is rustic, but my equipment nice. And that's all we got for you on this one. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the process and uh, watching uh, Frankie and I teach Zach on how to build a set of stairs. And uh, if there's anything else you guys want to see us teach, uh, maybe Zach or somebody else. If there's anything else you want to see us teach and period on what we do or share what how we do things let me know in the comments down below that's all we got for you today god bless you guys go get them we'll catch you guys on another one